let's talk about networking in cloud we'll talk about very basics of networking first some basic concepts and then we will talk about networking in aws world so that would give you an idea about comparing how actual physical networking works and how it may be little differently implemented into cloud so we will go into both the aspect let me get started here with networking basics first we'll talk from very high level how physical network looks like and then we'll compare them with aws network i'm expecting here that you know some of the basic stuff related to networking like ip addresses network interfaces what is a router what is a switch but in case you do not know this let me know and i would host a specific training on the very basics of networking so that you can learn about those topics so let's get started with networking basic first i'll talk about high level networking of physical world how physical world computers are connected with each other let's assume we have set of physical servers and they want to communicate if they want to communicate we would need a mechanism so that they can send trans send signals out transmit signals out and that's where we would be needing network interface cards this network interface card would be into the server is there into your laptop could be physical could be implemented in a virtual fashion and maybe it could be a wireless card doesn't matter but it is a mechanism by which your signal will be transmitted to the outside world and then they would be communicating probably through a network switch because we want multiple devices to communicate with each other so we would host a network switch and then we will utilize it to communicate to different devices now once i have a network switch a network switch has a limitation that it may be designed for 8 port or maybe 16 port or something else beyond it but it is always always having some specific number of port maybe 8 maybe it has 16 port maybe 32 port and so on port is the physical connection where your wires would be connected and through which your communication would be happening so this port is where this device would get communication done now if a limitation is existing in the switch which is 8 16 or maybe similar type of port what if we need a bigger network if we need bigger network probably you would end up with this kind of situation where you have another network switch they both are connected together and now my network has become a bigger network right like consider i i will give simple example here consider you have one room and you have another room now if you want that room to make bigger what you will probably do you will remove the wall in between that's a similar stuff that you have created here you have extended your network switch capability to another switch and maybe this can handle 128 port this may allow to head one more 128 port further and you can keep on expanding your network like this this is a very simple implementation i am talking about here now the challenge can come if you keep on expanding your room it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger then there would be issues of this big network with broadcast broadcast would create a problem broadcast is a common method in network for communication broadcast is like one machine would just yell out or was just shout out hey i want to talk to everyone and they would be sending a broadcast signal consider that you are into a room there are thousands of people inside and everyone is talking obviously there would be too much noise level and to control it in physical world what we utilize we utilize a component which is called a vlan or a virtual lan so maybe you can create a vlan for public network another vlan for private resources one vlan for hr application another vlan for finance application so though you would be connected into the same physical switch or different physical switch but now a virtual lan is built on top of it so it is like a impression that we have virtually divided the switch switch in which some hr application would communicate we have divided the switch into another logical section on which only finance application would communicate physically they are connected but logically they are separated that is what we mean by a virtual lan so virtual lan would ensure that we can follow stringent security policies for different type of workload and it is commonly achieved in physical world by configuring vlans within a network fabric these vlan are different networks 
and if these different networks need to communicate with each other you would be needing a router between them network switches are considered as something called layer 2 devices whereas router are your layer 3 devices these layers are representing the osi layer which is your open system interconnection layer and once these once this router device is configured what it would allow you it would allow you to communicate from different vlan you could configure routing policy and that would ensure communication can happen from one location to another location or one network to another network that's what the work of a router is probably you would also want your network to be communicating with internet and internet is not considered to be the safest of the network so probably we would be having a firewall implemented and that firewall would ensure that only legitimate traffic can come in and all other traffic is blocked from entering my network so that is a common way of securing your network plus probably you may also have one more device which will act as your internet router which would actually communicate with the internet service provider and that is how your network may look like into a physical world now if this is your home network probably these three functions of routing firewall and internet router would be all built in into your service providers router which they have given you or you have implemented so it would take care of routing it will take care of firewall solution internet routing and probably it would also have wi-fi capabilities so your wi-fi devices can also communicate but when i'm talking about enterprise solutions these devices will be created or this will be uh, deployed independently and they would have a set of instruction to follow and a set of configuration to be done so these can be probably separate in a corporate environment so keep this analogy at back of your mind we will now talk about networking in aws that how aws has implemented this networking now the basic concept of networking won't change if in physical world your ip address is v4 which is a 32 bit ip address that still remains the same if you have to use a cidr notation for your network it still remains the same we use tcp or ip protocol for communication still remains the same so those concepts would remain same the implementation detail has been modified by aws because when aws started building a network in which thousands of customers would be connected and they would need isolation they would need scalability they would need performance they couldn't get that problem solved by the existing hardware and software available with different networking vendors so what they had to do they had to design the whole networking gear on their own software hardware combination internal protocol internal mechanism of communication and that's why implementation of networking in aws is little differently done basic concepts remain the same but the way we interpret them or the way we configure them would be little different so let's go ahead and talk about the similarities from networking in physical world to networking in aws world right so we have physical server but you do not get access to physical server directly in aws what you get access to you get access to ec2 machine which is your amazon elastic compute cloud instances so these ec2 instances are in a way representing a server in your physical environment as these servers needed a network interface to communicate similarly this ec2 instances would have a network interface obviously implemented virtually that is referred as eni eni stands for elastic network interface and as i said before aws loves this word elastic that represent the flexibility and elasticity of interface so this is also a interface which is elastic in nature nature that you could detach it from one instance if the need be and attach it to another instance if you want it so that kind of elasticity is there and that's why it is called a uh, elastic network interface now aws doesn't give you access to create something called vlan they give you a similar construct that is called a subnet so subnet is your logical isolation maybe i would have one subnet in which i would host my web server 
another subnet which I would be hosting all my database servers in. One subnet may be exposed to the public network and I would call it a public subnet. Another subnet may still remain private and only allow internal communication. So that is our equivalent of VLAN into AWS world that is called a subnet and you can create subnet if based on your technical and business requirement like public private for HR application for web server for databases you could create that isolation that is called a subnet if these are isolated network they would need to communicate so routing is required and for routing we have a concept called routing table and this routing table would allow you to communicate from one network to another you could define policies when routing table would forward traffic when it won't forward the traffic so those entries can be added into routing table for communication should not be a problem now in traditional world in physical network your firewall is mostly on the outer parameter or is in the outer network if you see this one is your inner network and this one is your outer network AWS has a different approach for firewall solution on network layer we can have two type of firewall one is called a security group another is called a network ACL ACL stands for access control list now for representation purpose I am saying that these are here or this is a firewall equivalent but in AWS world the implementation is different these security group and network ACL are not implemented on the outer layer or on edge network but they are implemented much closer to a workload they would be implemented into EC2 machines around EC2 and on your subnet so we will talk about security group and network ACL first right now just remember that these are network layer securities which you could implement with your solution once this is set up you would need to communicate to internal sorry internet and that's why we would be using uh, internet router similarity which is referred as IGW that is called internet gateway so that is how AWS implements a networking so your EC2 machine use ENI to communicate use subnet to create logical isolation use routing table to route traffic across subnet or across different network plus implement security using security group and network ACL and if you have to communicate outside you would be using a IGW device for external communication so if you look at this picture I haven't introduced any new component as of now all these component exist into on-prem world and AWS has similar component within their environment they are not exact same but they are similar in the functionality what they provide to customers but now I am going to introduce one more component which is very unique to AWS and that component is called VPC or which stands for virtual private cloud what AWS has done AWS has given every customer a isolated network space so they could create the networking configuration setting and uh, and deployment what they want without interfering anyone else so VPC is basically your portion of logical isolation on the whole big Amazon network and by default unless you configure whatever you do within a VPC whatever machines you deploy networking you configure it remains within the VPC it won't interfere with others right so VPC I, I don't want to use the word container but that is more appropriate that is a box or a container in which you have kept all your network configuration like your routing table then your security group and network ACL your subnet configuration and whenever we launch a EC2 machine it would also be launched within a VPC this is a fundamental unit of networking you would need a VPC to get started with AWS networking and to facilitate your work and to let you get started faster there is always always a default VPC present into AWS account in every region 
you will find a default VPC exist. I'll talk about this more into the next section, but just summarizing that VPC is the logical isolation which would allow us to create a network which is not interfering with others and we are allowed to select different configuration setting deployment option of that network within our VPC. Right. So I hope this was clear. We just did a quick comparison between physical world networking and networking in AWS. We would elaborate these concept into the next section. We will discuss routing table subnet, how to implement it, how a VPC looks like into the next section. So thanks for listening. I'll talk to you into the next section. Thank you.